amazing stuff going on. A battle between good and evil, right versus wrong. Good versus evil. It's a spiritual battle, folks. He is back. He is back. One of the smartest white men on this side of heaven. Bill Lockwood is back. Bill is a writer, radio host at Liberty with Bill Lockwood. American Liberty, I'm sorry. Writer, radio host at American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. Teacher in Wichita Falls, Texas. A preacher at our Park Church of Christ. And uh, lots of stuff to talk to Bill about. Got to catch up. Welcome back, Bill. Thank you, Jesse. I sure enjoy being back with you. Yes, sir. It's good having you back. Um, lots of stuff has happened since we last talked. I remember one of the things we talked about in our last discussion is uh, that America was close to a dictatorship. Right. And uh, are we there now or we still have a ways to go? Well, you know, we have a soft dictatorship right now, really, because, uh, you know, that some of the news clips this morning and, and you can everybody can see it, that Joe Biden is using the FBI to arrest people who are his political enemies. And uh, the same thing that Obama did. Um, I don't I don't know how that's going to shake out and how much the American people can take. But uh, here we have a man who's uh, I don't believe was legitimately elected. And uh, he was a man who's shown to be tied closely to China. He lied about Hunter Biden and all that's coming out, even though the mainstream media tried to poo-poo that whole story during the election. So all of that, for one thing, uh, another thing, and just another broader element, you know, the, the Biden administration should not be able, constitutionally speaking, to shut down the entire country and the oil industry in this country with the single fiat of his pen. Yeah. How did that how did that happen? Well, that's been in the making for a long time. The, the EPA through the regulatory process, all the laws that we live under are to be were designed constitutionally to be laws that were made by our own our own representatives. And those are the laws that we choose to live under. But that is not the way it has gone. And that's not the way it's gone for la the last 50 years, at least, because we have all these agencies now that are under the under the uh, uh, auspices of the Oval Office, and he has absolutely single-handedly shut down the oil industry, or at least made it hurt, made us all hurt. How can, how can a one man and his administration do that? Only because we have allowed the power to shift to the Oval Office. So I think that's pretty close to a dictatorship. And if we're going to go by James Madison's uh, discussion of it and his, and his definition of tyranny, he tells us that when all the powers from the judicial branch, the legislative branch, and the Oval Office, all of that come together that into, one, into one man or one office, that is the definition of tyranny. So according to James Madison, we're already under tyranny. It's just how much can the American people put up with? And do you think that American voters, the people... Because they've been, especially young people, have been so dumbed down in school and, you know, the educational cent, uh, uh, centers and places like that. Do you think it's in them to turn this around? No, I do not. Yeah. I think, I think the educational system has failed Americans for the last 50 years. As a matter of fact, uh, reaching all the way back to John Dewey, who took his uh, marching orders from Robert Owen, who was a, a, a hardened atheist. In America, he was said to be the father of American education. Robert Owen, an atheist, uh, by the way, debated Alexander Campbell in 1829 on the existence of God and socialism. That's something you don't even hear about today, but that was what was debated in 1829. The book is still available, and people ought to get it and look at it, but, this, but he was the father of education in America. And then later on, John Dewey took that cloak and became the father of American education. One of the signers of the Humanist Manifesto denies that there is even a God and his, his whole point was to change radically the structure of America. Even though uh, this was a Christian nation, as was founded by our founding fathers, they were revolted against that, and we have allowed that to take place. So our school systems are reflective of that humanistic society, and they're not, they're not educated in the classical literature. They're not educated 
regarding the Bible, regarding God, regarding natural law, not regard any of that kind of thing. Regarding the Constitution, absolutely not. So uh, we're in serious, serious trouble. I, um, the more I learn about socialism, because I didn't really know about socialism itself growing up and, and when I first moved here to Los Angeles, but lately I've been reading about it. People have sent me books about it. It seems as though socialism in America has been in the making for years, but I, I, the people didn't seem to see it coming. Right. Because I would have thought, I would think that had they seen it coming, it could have been cut off a long time ago. Am I right? Yes, I, I believe you're right. They, they didn't see it coming. We, we were, after the Civil War, we became very, very lax in, uh, in, in not non-alert in, in different movements and different philosophies. So what, what is called the Progressive Era, which was from the 1870s to the, through about 1910 or so, the Progressive Era, uh, we're still really in a Progressive Era. Progressivism is socialism. That's what it is. It's to take yeah. all power to Washington, D.C. Now, people may say, well, uh, th there were some good things that took place, like getting children out of factories and so forth, which no doubt some of that may be true. But the, the bottom line is that socialism uh, is based upon an evolutionary view of man. And it tells us the root level problem is private property. Private property is the problem. Well, where did private property originate? Private property, according to socialism textbook, is the originated uh, after man evolutionary climb, uh, came out of the slime pits and evolved. And then, so what took place was private property was invented by people and family was invented by people to protect the private property. So inheritance rights and families, that was all designed by greedy men in order to protect private property. So socialism in its classical sense is to say, Private property is the problem. That's what Karl Marx said. That's what Friedrich Engels said. That's the idea. So, and that's what that's what we're following. Yeah. We're, we're redistributing private property. That's what the income tax is about. Uh, so, that's where we that's where we've been for a long, long time. And you can Woodrow Wilson was basically a socialist. Might be a soft socialist, but he was a socialist. You know, it's amazing to me that a big old country like the United States of America where vast majority of people can fall for socialism. I, I, I just never imagined that the people would give up freedom for enslavement, you know, enslavement, would be controlled right. rather than be free, would be individuals rather than groups. It didn't seem like that was possible in America. When I was seeing it in other countries, I used to wonder how did that happen but I never imagined that it could happen in America. And now I can see that it can totally, and it is totally happening. I wanted yeah. to ask, I don't know how much you know about the uh, civil rights movement, so-called civil rights movement, but I've understood for a while now that the civil rights movement was about socialism as well. It was right. never about setting the people free. It wasn't about making things right. It was about controlling the people. Do you think that my Luther King Jr. and all those guys started out that way, or did something go wrong? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know exactly how Martin Luther King started, but I tell you what, in the 1950s, he sat in communist meetings, and those, those pictures were uh, posted in different places uh, be, because even though there indeed were wrongs that were in society, the problem is that they took it to a federal level. According to the founding formula of our founding fathers, problems such as those which in society would arise should not be taken to a federal level in the sense of, okay, well, let's, you know, and so that's what happened with the civil rights movement, 1964, the civil rights act, it took everything to a federal level. And now they're ordering every, every business and every educational institution, everyone to have some kind of uh, representative of blacks and whites and so forth. And all that was taking place. Martin Luther King, people do not know but he was sympathetic to communists from, from as early as I remember reading. Uh, he was not only in communist meetings, but he also supported Ho Chi Minh. Uh, he supported the anti-American movement that was going on in the United States, such as the Jane Fonda's of the world. He made many, many, many comments. They were in Time Magazine, Newsweek Magazine. In those days, 
and uh, he was he was very much a radical because they what happened was that the communist movement in America recognized that there's a natural division, a natural cleavage in in America, and that's along the lines of race. So they latched on to racial leaders such as Martin Luther King, latched onto him and and utilized him and used him for their purposes. And so even though people say, well, there's a lot of good that came out of what well, may be so. That's not, <laughs> that's not even debatable. But the, the point is that they the communists used him and it and it took um, America in a direction ultimately that was really socialistic in nature because now we have power on the top and the people are all all slaves on the bottom in the sense. Do you remember uh, during that time at all if there were others fighting against uh, that movement because it was a socialist communist movement? Were there people fighting against it and trying to speak out against yeah. it at the time? Mm -hmm. Yes, there, sir, there certainly was. Uh, there certainly were many people. Matter of fact, the John Birch Society even pointed it out since uh, Robert Welch, who founded the John Birch Society, he pointed it out in the late 1950s to say, here's what's happening. Here's what's going on. There were other writers like H.L. Hunt, who was, a, uh, who was a, a writer, a columnist, and he was pointing these things out. Uh, John Flynn pointed these things. A lot of writers were talking about these things. And, uh, and some of them were pointing out the fact that there's no turning back once you go down this track. There's no turning back to, to put power back in the states. Now, we've seen just recently, just the other day, or when the, the abortion ruling that came about yeah. regarding reversing Roe versus Wade, they went say, we're putting power back to the states. Well, what's happened? Well, they're exploding all across the map, yeah. you know, from Los <laughs> Angeles all the way to Phoenix, all the way out to the East Coast. And, uh, but these people are, are ill-informed ignorant about the Constitution, ignorant about what are rights. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, we can talk about that, but, you know, this is, this is the problem. So they, they say we're going to take it back to the states. That's all they said. They said it's not in the Constitution of America to abort a child. So that's basically back to the system of federalism. But the, the populace are so ill-educated, so uninformed, so ignorant about what really is the Constitution that they – because this is a constitutional republic, so they've, they've exploded, and that's what's happening. It's going to continue. Amazing. One last thing about the civil rights movement. I remember growing up, from what I, could, what I knew of, black people were not, uh, they were not socialists. You know, they worked for right. themselves. They had families, and they taught each generation to be the same way, to, to work and to be independent and to love uh, even your neighbor as yourself, not to hate anyone. And so when the civil rights movement started, and in the end of that, and it's still not over, but in the end of that, it, it, the mentality of the blacks changed from yeah. independence, from individuality, from loving America to dependent, blaming, and hating America. So it sounds like when this civil rights movement started, and, and by the way, I'm a member of the John Birch Society, and they have really good information on socialism for they sure. Do. And um, I remember thinking that the blacks have lost their way, and I often wonder had they not ever gave, given themselves over to the civil rights movement or anyone else, black Americans would be totally different today. It would be, right. it would be one nation under God instead of a divided nation. Right. One of the things that socialism has done, uh, Lyndon Johnson, you know, Lyndon Johnson, 1964 and uh, 65 and 66 and his different initiatives that he put out. Uh, one of the things was that to divide uh, America along those lines. And by doing that, what was he attacked the family? So he had, for example, Lyndon Johnson had a, a huge uh, we would call it Section 8 housing today, but a huge apartment complex built in St. Louis, I believe it was. I think it was called uh, Igor, Igor Pruitt or something like that. It was named after two men. And so it was inviting all the poor people to live in there, primarily poor blacks, to live in this particular government housing. But the, the caveat was you could not have a father in the home. Yeah. Well, what, so what the incentive was for the father to leave. And so even fathers that would come and try to visit <laughs> their family. Think about this, Jesse. There are fathers who came to visit their families 
in the night because they said, you know what, this will be good for you. The government's going to take care of you. Kiss mom and the children goodbye. And they would come <laughs> and see them at night. They would arrest those men and take them away and evict the families because they, they wanted to be that way. It was, it was purposely divisive of the family. And that's, that was setting up a system to incentivize fatherless homes. And that's the way this welfare system has gone. Yeah. Fatherless homes. And, and, and it's, it's a really a man's movement. Yeah. I mean, it's, people say it's a woman's movement, but it's a man's movement because you think about all the men out here having all these babies through different women and going around and having sex all over the place and not even having a care in the world about responsibility of fathering a child. And that's what's happened in the black community. And, but that's, but that's government incentivizing that to take place. What a mess. I can tell you that none of my uncles and aunts, my, you know, my grandparents' children uh, ended up on welfare. When they left home, they went to uh, Florida, Indiana, and places like that. And they all got jobs, and they bought their homes. They all bought homes right away, and they would get married. They had families. They never relied on the government at all. It just wasn't. Right. It just wasn't a mentality at that time. Right. And it's hard to get not all, not all, not all, not all, but most black people to realize that that's true, and that black people wasn't that way. They, for the most part, they were not relying on the government or anyone else to be their leaders. It's hard to change people's minds when they have accepted wrong as a right. It's hard to get them to see what's right. That's, that's correct, especially when the government incentivizes with money yeah. their, their direction and their thinking. Uh, if you're, just, just, just think to border, for example. A lot of people say, well, the illegals that are coming over here, they need a better life. Well, who, who knows? When you pass out a check that is more than you and I make, or as much as we might make, they're handing them a check. Who knows whether they're coming for a better life or for money? You, don't, you, you can't make them. Obviously, they're coming over because we give them our, materi- our material goods. We're giving them to them yeah. and destroying America at the same time. So that's the way that socialism works. Did you hear, or speaking of the illegal alien, um, they just found 40 people dead on Monday in a trailer abandoned there. I believe it was in Texas somewhere. Did you hear about that? I did. I did hear about that. There's just, yeah, 40 of them are dead uh, in, in the trailer. This oh. is sad, but this is, you know, this is the trafficking that continues to go on. It's interesting, too, is that I get, this government doesn't seem to care about that at all as long as they get what they want. And what they want is for the people to come here, for them to get the votes so that they can uh, maintain and perceive power and wealth that they want. And they don't really care that these people are dying, uh, trying to get here, being killed after getting here. They seem, and they don't care about the American people at all. They seem not to care about that at all. And that's mind blowing to me. Yes, it is. You know, I, I tell people, even though it just the news has come out that there's about a million people that have switched from the Democrat to the Republican Party, right? Which which may be good. It depends upon which Republican you vote for, as I you know. know yeah, <laughs> the, the Republican, Republicans have a lot of problems. However, the people that are flooding across the border, the people in charge in Washington D.C. This is a democratically controlled Congress. It has been for a long time. Donald Trump got in there, and all they did was try to impeach him continually, throw roadblocks in his way. And the, the entire Justice Department is democratically socialistic controlled. They're not going to, you know, Hillary Clinton's not going to face the music. She's not going to go to jail. She's right. not going to face prosecution. We know that. You would and I would. So what's taking place is they, these people, these in Washington, D.C., those people in charge, they believe that the people coming across the border are, Democratic voters. If they did not believe that, that border would be shut down today. Yeah, we all know that. Yeah, and, but they they know that's what's taking place, and so that's what they're doing. They're bringing in more voters. You mentioned the. Did you mention the rule of law? Well, uh, I didn't mention it, but I should have. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? The rule of law. Well, this country is a constitutional republic, and that means that it is not 
It is not a democracy in the sense of how many votes or how many people are in favor of a certain thing. The Constitution is the ultimate law of the land. That Constitution is, and so a constitutional republic, a republic refers to the fact that we are not all participatory in every single vote. So in Austin, Texas, I live in Wichita Falls. In Austin, Texas, I don't, I don't get involved in every single vote, obviously. I, I, who would have time to do that? <laughs> right. So we have representatives to do it, and that was designed on purpose to keep down uh, the, the passions that might arise if we do it to representatives. So that is a republic. Constitution means the Constitution law itself is the supreme law of the land. And so that's what we're guided by. Not because people get out there and might shout on the streets and break windows in Phoenix, Arizona, because they don't like the, the abortion ruling coming out of the Supreme Court, you know, the Dobbs ruling. Yeah. And that's what it means. So we are to be a nation guided by law. But when people become lawless and disrespect God and natural law, then we are in serious trouble. And that's what, that's what has happened. Amazing. Uh, I want to talk to you about the Supreme Court ruling, but first I want to ask, the Democrats are now once again bringing up the possibility of packing the court. Right. Can it, constitutionally, can they do that? You know, constitutionally, they cannot do that. That, that was, so Franklin Roosevelt, he, he threatened to pack the court. He did that in order to sway the voters and sway the Supreme Court to go in his direction. And, and it was it used as a crowbar to bring everybody uh, in line with his socialistic policies because he was, he was a big socialist, soft socialist, but nevertheless, in comparison to today, so nevertheless, that's what he did, that is what he wanted to do. And so they've, they have threatened to do that every time that the Supreme Court doesn't go the direction yeah. that they want. <laughs> and every time that they come up with some, and, and by the way, the ruling that came out on the Dobbs case is, is constitutional. They want to pack the Supreme Court and they probably could do it lawlessly. They probably could do that if they have enough power, but that's what this is about. We've gone from uh, debating the issues and thinking about the issues and coming to a, a somewhere in the middle to it's all about power. And that's exactly what the Democrats are wanting to do, pack the Supreme Court in order to change the law because they think that the Supreme, Supreme Court makes the law, yeah. which is, of course, not true. Now, here's something to think about. Let's, let's say the Supreme Court is packed. Let's say this is packed the Supreme Court with 15 judges. And let's say they come out, such as the Taney decision in 1854 that said blacks are property. Is that... Is that going to be, is that right? No, it's still not right. <laughs> yeah. It's still not right. Tawny's decision in 1854 that said blacks are property and not citizens, that is still not right because there's something else that is greater, and that is natural law. So William Blackstone, who was an English jurist, and our founding fathers carried Blackstone, Abraham Lincoln carried a copy of Blackstone with him. Blackstone said there are two laws that are the foundation of all law of a country. And that is number one, the law of revelation, what God has said in the Bible, law of revelation. Number two is natural law. And that goes right back to what Paul said in Romans chapter two, when the Gentiles that have not the law, that is the law of Moses, when the Gentiles that have not the law do by nature the things of the law, these not having the law are a law unto themselves in that they show the work of the law written in their hearts. Yeah. So Blackstone would say this, the thumbprint of God upon all men is natural law, that we instinctively know there's something's right and something's wrong. So even if they should pack the Supreme Court and come out with a decision that say blacks are not people, they're property, doesn't make any difference. Natural law says that's a violation of what we instinctively know is right. Amazing. Bill, you should be a history teacher. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I used to teach you a little bit of history, but I, you know, that's, I have a good time with it. Amazing. I want uh, so let, one last thing I think about the packing of the court. Let's say that, and I don't put anything past the Democrats. No, and, I don't put anything past them. And most of the Republican representatives either. Um, if they decide to try and pack the court, can the 
the court, the high court overturn that? Uh, now, I'm not certain about that. So the, the Democrats are right now saying that the Supreme Court is an illegitimate court because right. they've done with a decision they I don't know. like. Yeah. So if the Supreme Court says that, no, you can't pack, put more of judges in here, they're just going to say it's an illegitimate court because what we're into now is a totalitarian power play where we're at the end game of socialism and totalitarianism run by globalists such as Joe Biden, who care not about what the Constitution says. They don't give they don't give a flying flip about what the, <laughs> what the founding fathers intended. They don't care anything about it. Yeah. So it doesn't make any difference. So it's all about power right now. That's amazing. I uh, I'm blown away, Bill, with the things that's happening in my country today. I just you know, you just don't think while growing up, you don't think one day we got to deal with all this mess. Yeah. You just, <laughs> just <laughs> You know what, Jesse, there was a, let me interrupt you real quickly. There was, there was a writer in the 1950s, another, you asked about who else said th things that we're talking about. Yeah. And uh, this man was named, was, his first and last name was Garrett. Garrett Garrett. I don't know why his mom, <laughs> mama named him that. She must, she, she must love that name. <laughs> she loved that name. Last name was Garrett with two T's. First name was Garrett with one T. Wow. Baby by his first name. Hold that thought, Bill. Okay. Let me take a quick break. Bill Lockwood is with us. 888-775-3773. American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. Reading, writing for the Bible brand. Back in a moment. I want to get back to Bill Lockwood. Bill, before we get back into the conversation, um, tell the folks how to get to your website, how they can find you, and, and get involved with a lot of the stuff that you're doing. Thank you so much for that, Jesse. The, the website is AmericanLibertyWithBillLockwood.com. And we've made some changes here lately. And uh, so we have, uh, it looks a little differently and, and there'll be different, a little full format going on there. So we're in the midst of these changes right now, but that's the website, AmericanLibertyWithBillLockwood.com. And the radio show is the same. And we have some put, things put out on YouTube now. If you look at American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. And uh, so I, as you know, I've been out for about, um, I guess about two months, really, yeah, yeah. With medical issues, and I've had a friend step in, a great patriot by the name of Derek Ruvokaba, and he has been, uh, he's a local man here in Wichita Falls, a real brilliant young man, and he's been able to uh, step into the gap and t cover it for me, so you'll see Derek Ruvokaba on there, and that's out of Wichita Falls, it's News Talk 1290, and it's also on uh, the FM dial, which is 760 FM, so it's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. So those are the two two outlets that I have there, really. Well, I'm glad that you're doing well now. Uh, the people in chat are saying that you look younger, that you lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> when I first came home from the hospital, I took a look at myself in the mirror for the first time. I thought, I look like an old man. I look like I'm in serious trouble here. <laughs> uh <laughs> Yeah, they were telling me I look good. I says, no, you know, y'all have been telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, you definitely look younger, and you don't look like an old man, that's for sure. Well, appreciate that, Jesse. <laughs> I, I guess some white don't crack. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of did crack. I thought I was cracking there, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just thankful to God for his great providence and all the prayers yeah. and people such as yourself, and I appreciate your calls. I mean, yeah. people need to know you've, and behind the scenes, calling, checking. And so thank you so much and love you for that. Thank you, Bill. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're well. Um, I want to ask you, and then we're going to get to one of your favorite people. Uh, I'm sure she missed you a lot. Mays from Dayton. Hey. Yeah, yeah, so we'll get to her in a minute. Um, I want to ask you uh, about Roe versus Wade. The Supreme Court made some major ruling in, uh, on a, first on a New York gun law uh, they are now saying, the Supreme Court to, said to New York and the rest of the world, I guess, no, you cannot stop citizens from carrying a concealed weapon. You right. can't stop them from defending themselves, protecting themselves. And now New York is trying to come up with some other way to get around that. W what are your comments about that before we get to the abortion one, the new ruling on the gun laws uh, from the from the well, I, I, I'm appreciative of the, the ruling in New York. I think that's exactly right. People, people need to, the right to defend and protect themselves. Yeah. The Second Amendment 
The Second Amendment to be applied to the federal government, but the principle is the same for the state governments. And so the founding fathers created a system whereby different states can experiment with different things. So what's going to happen if you come up with these strict gun laws? First of all, there's not gonna, it's not going to be effective in, in reducing crime. It's not going to be effective in reducing violence. We've seen that already. Yeah. But people are going to vote with their feet. They're going to leave California. They're going to leave Chicago, Illinois. They're going to leave New York if they come up with these draconian gun laws and go to states that respect the constitutional right of people to keep and bear arms, which is a right of self-determination that God gave us to protect myself, my family, my property. That's biblical in Exodus chapter 21. So uh, that's one thing about the gun laws. So I, another thing about the gun laws is, you know, Joe Biden and, uh, the, and sadly to say, Republicans such as John Cornyn of Texas unconstitutionally came along with all these red flag laws and out of the shooting that took place after the shooting uh, in Uvalde. The point of fact is the federal government is forbidden by the Constitution to even enter into the discussion. They have no right to say anything. Wow. It's a state issue only. Federal government, keep your nose out of it. And that's the founding fathers formula. Congress shall make no law respecting the right to keep and bear arms. That what is amazing. Now, here's that, thou shalt not, and they're doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah. And that includes Republicans such as John Cornyn, who needs to be booted out of office right now. Yeah. We definitely, we have a one-party system now because the Republicans, for the most part, think and act just like the Democrats. They go along with them. They vote with them. They never stop the Democrats from doing anything. It's amazing that we have a one-party system in America right now. Yeah, it's very, very sad. And it's been that way for a long time. People don't realize that. You had a Ronald Reagan who was really great, but even Ronald Reagan was not powerful enough to remove, as he promised he would do, the National Education Association. He said, that's unconstitutional. We're going to get rid of it. Yeah. Once you set those things in place, it's like reading the Old Testament. You know, when, when Solomon set up the high places to worship Molech outside of the, in the, right in the site of the temple, they were never able even though they eradicated idolatry, they were never able to get rid of those high places where people would go to and worship idols. Hezekiah tried it. Josiah tried it. They could never get rid of the high places. And the footnote is there in their reigns. They, they did great before God. God was pleased with them, but they did not get rid of the high places of Baal. And why is that? Because evil latches on like a leech, and it sucks the blood out of you, and it stays with you, and once you open the door to sin and it stays in there, there's only, there's only one solution, and that is Jesus Christ and him crucified and getting rid of that personally. Yeah. But, there's, but there's no solution in a country unless you go to revolution. That's why we separated from England. But once you get going down the socialistic track, once you go past this constitution, such as taking money from you, and giving money to, to Mays, for example, if I'm the government, I'm going to take money from Jesse, give it to Mays. I've, I've just got to vote. Yeah. And that she's going to vote for me. Yeah. But once you start that business, that is theft. And that's what socialism is doing. And it just latches on to people and it just changes the way they think and the way they behave. Amazing. I want to ask about our, our, uh, the abortion issue. The Supreme Court said no. We have no business with this issues, issue at all. It should have never been a part of the U.S. Supreme Court. Even when they voted it in, they took it on. They should have said right. no way back then. So now we're turning it back over to the states and let the people decide. And, and there are those who want to kill their children uh, saying that this is wrong and they're having a hissy fit. What do you say about the whole abortion issue and the courts and everything else? Number one. The left, the pro-abortionists, the pro-choice so-called people, they do not want an open discussion on this. They don't want a fair discussion. They don't want to even think about what, and they're all about following the science, aren't they? Right. Well, what about, what does science and what does medical science say? In 1981, a congressman by the name of John East had, had hearings in which he had over 57 expert witnesses, medical doctors, gynecologists, and so forth, Overwhelmingly, they stated, we could list the names, I've got them right here in front of me. 
They said life begins at conception. Life begins at conception. No question asked. That's medical science. So it's not about a right of a woman's body. So the left wants to frame it like it's my body, my choice. No, it's another life. Yeah. It's another life in the womb. So that's number one. Number two, the Constitution does not give a right to abortion. They have based that, that is the Roe decision in 1973, originally upon the right of so-called privacy. That was the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment right of privacy is being violated every day by the IRS because it was designed to say, the government cannot step in here and see all my papers, search all of my goodies, see what money I've made, see what I owe them. That is off limits. That's like, that's exactly what our founding fathers had the Boston Tea Party for. They were, the government of Great Britain was going through all of their warehouses without warrants, searching all their goods, searching their ships, seeing if they had illegal tea. That is tea that was not purchased through the East India Tea Company. Right. They said, you have to buy it from our company or you're, that's illegal. Well, so they were searching everybody without warrants and they were ransacking warehouses, ships, houses. The founding father said, no more of that. Unless you have a warrant, you're not going to be able to do that. So the Fourth Amendment made us secure it from illegal searches and seizures. But we have been violating that since 1913. And, and that is the income tax, as well as the IRS creation, which violates it every single day. And yet, that's what they wanted to base Supreme Court decision 1973, the Roe versus Wade decision. They wanted to base that upon the right of privacy. That had nothing to do with it. <laughs> that had to do with illegal searches and seizures and protecting us from government overreach and, and violate international rights. It had nothing to do with whether or not there's life in the womb and whether a woman has right to kill somebody. Amazing. You oh. should be a U.S. Supreme Court person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think that I have protesters outside the House right now if I did. <laughs> you would. <laughs> and that, and I, that would show that... Would show that uh, how, how ridiculous all of this gun law stuff is. You know, Matthew McConaughey got up in, in the White House and said, we need gun laws, we need, a, <laughs> we need to have red flag laws. And then he walks around with, a, with an armed guard around him, four or five guys with pistols, yeah. and they can talk that way. Yeah. <laughs> we can't. Yeah. They're, that, so, they're so hypocritical, it's, it's just ridiculous. And Matthew McConaughey doesn't know anything about the Constitution, and that's just, but I've gotten going on a rant now. Matthew McConaughey couldn't find his way out of a paper bag. That's right. What's interesting is that the congressmen, they pa they are passing laws that take away our right to bear arms, while in the same bill they're saying that they have the right to keep and bear arms. They need to be protected, they them and their families, but not us. It's like they think that they're better than we are or something. It's weird. Exactly. You know, that's what Obamacare was about. Yeah. You have to follow Obamacare, but we are not going to. We'll have our private practices in right. Congress. But you're not going to. This is this is elitism. It's totalitarianism and, and it's socialism. That's what socialism is. Power on the top and everybody else on the bottom. They um, um, they are now suggesting that since the women that want to kill the, the, the man's babies in the womb, that they could go to different states, liberal states and do it. And now right. they're, they're considering offering vouchers to those women who want to go and kill the baby. And, Isn't that but terrible? not to the mothers who want to go and have babies, the families that want to be created. They're not helping the families at all, but the women who want to kill the baby, they are possibly offering them vouchers. That is such a wicked, wicked system. Yeah. And it's the only way to stop that is for states to quit sending money to the federal government if they're going to offer our money to people who are going to abort their children and leave Texas and go to New York to abort a child. If, so what's happening is they're taking money from Texans, put it in the federal pot, then they're going to pay Texans to go to New York and abort their child. So they're skirting around it. The only way to stop this is to quit sending money to the federal government from the states and say, we're, we're done with this. Amazing. Unless, unless we have some backbone, that's not going to happen. One last one that I want to bring up, and then I want to get to a few calls before we run out of time here, Bill, is that uh, a more recent uh, ruling was in favor of a public high school football coach 
who was suspended by a local school district for refusing to stop leading the Christian prayers. Um, um, he, I guess, can now do that again. What do you think about that? That's a great ruling. It's great that they, they saw that. And, uh, but let's think about the Constitution once again. The First Amendment has an Establishment Clause and a Free Exercise Clause. You know, that the Congress shall make no law regarding the establishment of religion or, the, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So we have Establishment and Free Exercise. So what, what does that mean? The Founding Fathers are explicitly clear. To say that we're not going to establish a religion, they meant a national denomination. That's all they meant by it. Yeah. That's what the Establishment Clause means. There shall not be a national church. In other words, when they came from England, they came from a country that said, you're going to go to the Episcopal Church, you're going to worship, and if you don't go, you're going to pay your taxes to pay the preachers in those pulpits. It's an, a state-established and supported church. We'll have none of that in America. So Congress shall make no law regarding the establishment of a denomination. Even the discussions regarding that First Amendment in Congress, and anybody can read it, the man who came up with the final wording of it was Fisher Ames. Fisher Ames stated explicitly that that's what the intention was, no national denomination. Now, that background, what has that to do with a person praying in public? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. has nothing. So the Supreme Court did it exactly right. You may pray, you may worship, you may do, you may, you may pray the Lord's Prayer in public. You may ha have the whole entire stadium pray it if you want to. That has nothing to do with the establishment of a denomination. Amazing. Rodos is reporting that the conservative majority U.S. Supreme Court has chipped away at the wall separating church and state. So there, first of all, the wall of separation is not in the Constitution, number one. Number two, that statement was Thomas Jefferson's statement alone. And what he meant when he wrote to the Danbury, Connecticut Baptist organization who were afraid about his irreligion, he said there's a wall, and that is to say the wall is a one-way wall. The federal government is not going to reach in there and do anything to you. It's not going to penalize you. It's not going to... It's not going to uh, affect your religious practices whatsoever. There's a wall keeping the federal government from touching you. That's his intention of that statement. Now, all the people today talk about the wall of separation, that you should not have any kind of religious practice in a public place. That, that has nothing to do with the Constitution or with Thomas Jefferson's statement. That is a warping of history and a warping of the true intent of what the founders meant. That's amazing. I know that that coach, a guy who did the prayer, uh, Joseph Kennedy, he lost his job and everything behind that. So I guess now he can recuperate all that, right? I don't know. I, I wondered about that. I haven't yeah. followed that, but I thought, well, he ought to be able to sue and get it all that money back yeah. and, and go right back to coaching. And I, I think that I think that they ought to hire him in Texas then. Here's a guy that, or some of the state, you know, Oklahoma is pretty religious too, and so are many middle American states. Amazing. Iowa, so without hiring him in one of these places. Bill, let me get Mays in here at least right now. Yeah. Uh, Mays, welcome to the show. You're on with Bill Lockwood. Good morning, Heathen. Uh, 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 Lockwood, I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. I heard you say that the Supreme Court made a law. Supreme Court do not make laws. They interpret laws. Congress make laws. Supreme Court interpret in the president's hands. So when you said that abortion thing and it went back to the states, and I keep hearing you all hollering state rights. And when the state had the rights, all the things that they were doing in order for them to change laws to make things right for people that was, for they was aborting babies and everything else before abortion and everything came out. Y'all talking about the women that went and got abortion. I'm talking about the people that caused abortion for women that didn't want, that can't have kids anymore. All the stuff that they did to those women. And you here sitting here saying what the Supreme Court made a law and changed it. They shouldn't have anything to do. They were supposed, they were supposed to be interpreted in the law that the Congress do. I haven't heard them interpret nothing because all the stuff they bring up to the court, it has nothing to do with anything to change anybody's life. And when we talk about laws, there's only one law for this world, and that's God's law, not man's law, which is the Congress, the House, the Senate, the Supreme Court, and the President. That's man's law. And you follow it in the name of Christianity. So we look at the things that the Christians have done, under the name of Christianity, 
And nothing, that's why God came up with a law to stop y'all from doing what y'all are trying to do. And these state rights is just like the lady said, white rights, thank you, President, for five, for doing this in the Supreme Court, for getting it that way. So that's what it's all about. And it's not about us. So if Jesse gave me some money and you, we went out of business, <laughs> out of which I wouldn't take money, I refer everything I got, I don't beg for none. So if and we went out of business, so you and Jesse had money, went out of business, and I got to take my tax dollars and help you as a corporation to get you back on your feet. Uh, well, that's the way you know, it goes. Let Bill so let's respond. Wake up and May, stop being because okay. of time, May, hold on. Let Bill okay. respond. Go ahead, Bill. Well, I was going to say, Mays is right. The Supreme Court does not make law. That's correct. They interpret it, and I agree with that. I, and if I said they make law, then I, I misspoke. That's not what they do. That's exactly correct. But they do interpret the Constitution. And so, as they said in this particular Dobbs case, is the Constitution does not allow the Supreme Court to do what they did in Roe versus Wade. It's, it's outside the purview of the Constitution completely. And that's exactly right. So on that particular point, I, I think that's right. Regarding abortion, the whole thing, and, and what May said is right, regarding God's law, we're, we're bound to God's law as the higher law. That's exactly right. And God says that killing babies in the womb is wrong. It's <laughs> sinful. And so if we're bound by, by that, then our whole country ought to say, you know what? We're not having that in New York. We're not having it in Chicago. We're not having it in Illinois. We're not having killing babies at all because God's <laughs> law says that that baby in the womb is a child, is a human being, and life begins at conception. No, God law don't say anything about a baby. It said death shall not kill, meaning death penalty, which you believe in as a Christian, and all the things that Christians had done before the abortion laws came in. What, are, what was happening then before that, before 73? And what was happening? Really? I'm not talking about the women that were going to the alleys getting abortions and all this. I'm talking about the people before that. There was no law at all. Men was running around wild and crazy doing what they wanted to do. May, let me ask... <laughs> Let me ask you this, May. When what? the Supreme Court said it's okay for women to go and kill babies, were they making the laws then or interpreting the law? I didn't, they were not interpreting anything because they haven't interpreted w- nothing. Cause were they, they making got, the law? I'm going to put it like this, Jesse. They have a law in Alabama on the book. No, give me a quick, no, about the Supreme Court. When they said, okay, we're taking on, right the were they making the law or interpreting the law? They, they made it because they sent it back to the states, and the states was the one that made, made the reason why they had to have uh, the, law, the law that they had in the beginning, because the states weren't doing right. Amazing. The civil rights and no Amazing. other rights. I got to run. Thank you. Bill, tell the folks how to get you. Yes, sir. It's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood.com. Uh, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. It's a YouTube channel also. And then I have writing for the Bible brand on YouTube. So those, that's how they can get in touch with me. Bill, amazing comeback today, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you for your prayers and your and your Christian love. Absolutely. God bless you. We'll talk again soon. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Now. Bye-bye. Bye now. Uh, we got to take a break, folks. The news, hate is coming in with the hate news, not the fake news. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it. 